just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. Judgment and delay, but only hurting me and I and myself. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Whoa, you know, it's um, there's been um, a topic on my mind, and it's time, time. Um, there's a lot written about it in, in the uh, Blue Book. Um, and just to start, uh, I just want to read a couple of sentences, actually. It's not very much. Um, uh, this is out of chapter 15, The Holy Instant. The two uses of time. There's only two. You know, and I just need to say here, <laughs> before I start on this, if you can just grapple with one of the concepts that's talked about in A Course in Miracles, free will, time, forgiveness, just understand it completely, everything else falls into place. And that's kind of this, what I'm talking about today is horizontal versus vertical. And it was a, a game changer for me. And there's an obscure little five minute <laughs> video I did when I was still living in the States that has had more hits than anything else. And it's, it really, once I, I rat, rankled with the whole idea of vertical versus horizontal time, everything started unwrapping very quickly. So anyway, so today we're going to be talking about this little concept that was very helpful to me. So the two uses of time. Can you imagine what it means to have no cares, no worries, no anxieties, but merely to be perfectly calm and quiet all the time? That's heaven. Yet that is what time is for to learn just that and nothing more. For the Holy Spirit uses time in his own way and it is not bound by it. Time is his friend. <laughs> I like that. Time is his friend, Holy Spirit's friend. Uh, in teaching, it does not waste him as it does you. Wasted time. How many times have I said that in my life? I'm, this is a waste of time. <laughs> and all the waste that time seems to bring with it is due but to your identification with the ego, which uses time to support its belief in destruction. And I love this line. It's a classic line of all times in A Course in Miracles. The ego wants you dead, <laughs> but not itself. So that's why we're going to be talking about time today. And <clears throat> I think I'm just going to start in. I, <laughs> you know, in community, we have many opportunities to learn many new things. And I had a very high learning curve with a program that did graphics. And so I spent a lot of time putting this little three minute um, piece together that has a lot of information in it. So I will be pausing it from time to time to really kind of go into the graphics because it, it really was a very helpful thing for me to do to get the picture out of my head and put it on this little program. So um, we can go and start it and enjoy the show. Oh. <laughs> there we go.
Okay, I just want to speak a little bit about this one because there's, a, again, uh, horizontal is this moment of now, okay? You know, the power of now. He made a lot of money on it. I, it's a powerful concept, okay? This moment of now is all we have. And in this moment of now is where all our thoughts are birthed from. And this is the access to God, because only in this moment of now can you access God. The horizontal line is just birth to death. And along the way, we form a few beliefs, <laughs> a lot of beliefs. And it's like in the, the more that you loop with these thoughts, the firmer the belief comes. And I just want to say, um, you know, I use this analogy a lot because it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, there was a time in history on the horizontal timeline that they thought the world was flat. And so everything was kind of set up around this concept of flat world. And, you know, you always, you know, steered your boat along a coast. You never head out to ocean because you knew what was going to happen. You're going to drop off the edge. That was a belief at some point in time, someone had this this thought, the earth is flat, and then it was repeated over and over and over and over. And this is brainwashing. It's also called mind control, which is exactly what we're learning how to do here. So the longer you allow this thought to loop in your mind, the further from God, from love, you get. Because really, you can only experience the love that we're talking about in A Course in Miracles is in this present moment of now. There is no other. So your past start, thoughts start looping. All, you know, I use this little example. All relationships have ended badly. You know, that's a, that's a loop. And then whenever you meet someone that tickles your heart, you think, oh, all my past relationships have ended badly. How can I prevent this from happening? And then you're just digging, digging, <laughs> digging yourself to the grave. Future thoughts, I have to choose better to prevent this from happening again. Well, there's a good idea. So, you know, our lives are just kind of ping-ponging back and forth from these past thoughts, all relationships have ended badly, to future thoughts, I have to choose better to prevent this from happening again. And you pick, you know, your thought. I had a cancer thought at one time, and that was, ooh, cancer, that's deadly. And then the future thought is, ooh, how much time do I have left? It kept me out of the present. And that was really the title of this program, Beyond the Body. You have to go beyond the body if you're having any body thoughts at all. Ooh, I look better when I was five pounds thinner. That's a past thought. And then you spend your whole life focusing on the future of, how can I go about losing five more pounds? Keto, vegetarian, you know, no gluten, no sugar. Oh my God, the list is endless. Give it all up. It's not going to, there's no access to happy there. Oh, maybe for a moment if you lose five pounds, but then you're right back to thinking, I look better when I was five pounds thinner. You know, it, it's this horizontal line is just an endless, endless opportunities for suffering. <laughs> so the only time you can get in a peaceful state of mind is right now. It's right now. What am I thinking now, 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 now? And this is the mind training. This is what we're doing here. And this is levels of mind that David talks about all the time. This is the foundation for the instrument for peace and spiri and all these other things, tools that we have here in the Living Miracles community. So, you know, pick one and go for it. Because until you stop these cycles of looping, you know, and I see them all the time on Facebook. There, there was one yesterday and uh, this gentleman was really caught up in um, fear of fi financial failure. And he had bills and, and he kept saying, well, no, I'm above the battleground. I'm above the battleground. I just want to handle my finances. Well, that's a split desire. We've talked about this before. Split desire. I want the peace of God and I want my finances handled. Well, until you trust, and at some point I will do a program on trust, until you can trust that, that, that your finances are handled, 
And again, it's in this moment and now because that's the only place that you can come from. Right now, is there anything devastating happening? I may have to write a big check to some company that I owe money to, but it's right now and I can write the check with love, with trust in the Holy Spirit. You know, be in a little prayer while you're writing the check. And it just, it, it simplifies everything. Okay, so before I go too far, much further, let's continue on on this little journey. Horizontal versus vertical. Okay, hang on. This is this is my technology to learn. <laughs> okay, so I want to, uh, you know, I love doodly. I'm just saying I'm having a forgiveness opportunity even as I speak this. Okay, so this little one here, the longer you allow these past and future thoughts to loop, the further you get from hearing guidance, from hearing God, from truly being able to love. Okay, so as you can see in this little diagram, we've got timeline, past thoughts, future thoughts. The beliefs are formed in the timeline. Right now, we're pretty much beliefless. Beliefless. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, you can, uh, you know, you may have a thought, oh, I believe in gravity in this moment of now, but, you know, why spend a lot of time doing that? <laughs> So, but in this diagram, I'm going to refer back to the, you know, my boyfriend likes her more than he does me. Um, that's when you start projecting in the future. All relationships are going to be hard, okay? And then you put, from the past, you form a belief. All relationships are hard. Now, you don't think this. I mean, this is not a conscious thought, but it rules you. It rules your entire life. So you come to meet someone that tickles your heart and you're immediately going into past thoughts. Ooh, all relationships are hard. You have a belief there and that's getting triggered and that's creating a past thought, creating a future lesson. Oh my God. This is where this cycle just is endless until you stop the cycle. And the only way you can stop the cycle is in this moment of now. So you have this thought, all relationships are hard. You take that to Spiri <laughs> or write it down or journal it or whatever. But Spiri is kind of instrument for peace and Spiri are my kind of go-to uh, items to, to work this through. Um, because you can take that thought, relationships are hard. Who do you blame? Well, the other person. <laughs> and then you work through this 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 app, this chatbot, allows you to work through the levels of mind that David talks about a lot. And I know I have, I think our lovely moderator, Carolina and Marga are going to put that up on the thing. Um, levels of mind. You have to work through the levels of mind to dig up the belief. Just thinking, oh, I'm just not worthy of a good relationship. That's not going to be helpful. Because on top of that thought, Relationships are hard. You have all these, these emotions stacked. Anger at past relationships that you never cleared up, but you just walked away from going, well, I'm glad that's over. And then you, you, you pile on these emotions that bury this belief deeper and deeper and deeper. So at some point, you have to start unraveling this. And that's what we're doing with mind training here in, in community is unraveling this very complex uh, thought system that we've put together since birth. So once you get to the belief and you do a spiri, relationships hard are hard, you get to, to see, you know, sadness will come up, anger will come up. I mean, I had one this week, I threw up, I must say. You know, <laughs> Suzanne shared with me at one point, she said, the closer you get to really unwrapping the whole wrapped up package, the stronger the feelings are, and that's been my experience. But that comes for another show. So anyway, right now, just have your tears. You know, express your anger. Write it out. 
um, do a spiri, an instrument for peace, somehow get it out. Once you get to the feeling, and there was a thing in uh, Facebook the other day that um, Laura Bryant answered it, and it was, she answered it beautifully. Um, it was a woman saying, well, my feelings start coming up and it's not appropriate to express them. And yeah, I know that one. You know, it's like, go, find a bathroom, find a covey somewhere that you can be by yourself. You can just journal it. Um, as soon as you can, get someplace where you can do a spiri, you can allow the feelings up, you can have them. Um, and it, it's not a long process. I mean, it goes very quickly at some point. Um, and once you have the feelings, then, and Spiri takes it so beautifully through this turnaround of why are you projecting relationships are hard? Why are you blaming your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your child for something? You know, what's the projection all about? Because that's how we get rid of it is to put it out somewhere else so we don't have to deal with it. So once you have these feelings and you can really take the projection back, it's like, oh my God, you know, I'm scared of being in a relationship or I'm scared of getting too close to people or whatever it is. And there's millions, billions of beliefs that we lay on ourselves. It's not simple. Like, you know, if we, if we could just all go, well, I don't feel worthy and that's why I separated. Well, that's not helpful. You know, I mean, you have to get to what it is that you've put down that is creating this over and over for you. Um, so anyway, the belief is formed, relationships are hard, then you're bouncing to future thoughts. Um, you're basically setting up a future lesson. So if you're not getting the lesson that you're getting in this moment of now, if you're covering it up or walking away from it or avoiding it like the plague, which is what I used to do all the time, um, you're just setting up a future lesson because it's going to loop around again and you're going to get an opportunity to see it. And here's, I'm, here's a cautionary tale just based on my life. You know, deal with the lessons when they're small and, you know, silly, like my boyfriend likes her more than me. You know, I had to wait until I'm, you know, dreaming up projecting foreclosures and people coming at me with AK-47s and protective custody. And it's like, oh my God, you know, deal with it while it's simple. It's so much easier. Okay. So as the thought comes up, deal with it and process it through and you'll just get to the other side and you'll be happy. Now it may come back again because these are layers upon layers upon layers. The world is flat. The world is flat. Be cautious, danger, danger, you know, don't don't, don't go too far out there, you know, you may die. I mean, these are all horizontal belief systems that have been laid in place over these beliefs. So anyway, back to the film. <laughs> okay. Okay, I need to get, there we go, okay. <laughs> Technology, I love it, okay. How do I get, there we go, okay. Um, <laughs> don't mind me. Um, okay, so these thoughts keep us from being in the present moment. You know, my boyfriend likes her better than me. It is only in the present moment that we can hear guidance. So if our, our mind is filled with this thought, oh, I don't have any money, how am I gonna pay my bills? Oh. Life sucks. Oh, Trump's president. Whatever the thought. I've got cancer. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. There's no hierarchy to thoughts. Because it's a thought that's taking you away from the present moment. So now that we have created a belief, see the belief down at the bottom of the screen? And we have feelings. We have feelings about that belief. It makes me sad. My boyfriend likes someone else. It makes me scared I've got cancer. You know, this is moving way beyond book study, what we're talking about here, folks. Um, we now created a belief. Relationships are hard. And with that thought, we cannot access God. And, can't, and God cannot assist us in the horizontal. God can do nothing about the fact that your boyfriend likes someone else. Because it's your lesson. It's your lesson that you've taken 
yourself out of the present moment and created up this whole drama over my boyfriend doesn't like me, he likes someone else better, and this is, I'm doomed to relive this at some point, and I'll just stuff it. I'll just stuff it. Instead, have the sad feelings with a mighty companion. Write about the sad feelings. Do an instrument of peace on the sad feelings, or a speary. And this kind of takes it to the point where you can start picking up this goo, you know, cleaning it out. It's, David has used the idea of a, a dirty turkey pan. You know, clean your turkey pan. <laughs> it's like, get in there. Oh, sad feelings. Okay, okay, let's clean these out with Speary and an instrument for peace or whatever. Writing, journaling, it's a great way to do it. And then once you clear the feelings out, you get to the belief and you can go. And this is what happens for me. I'm not saying it's happening for everybody, but as soon as I get rid of the feelings, I see the beliefs and I see they're silly. I start laughing. It's like, oh my God, this is, this is completely driven, this existence in this particular form. Okay? Okay. So anyway, in the moment of now, if we're having all these past thoughts creating a future lesson, we cannot hear God. Okay, I'm going to digress just a little bit more. There was someone in Facebook. I, you know, I, my whole life is coming from Facebook these days. There was someone in Facebook that had this um, idea. He kept saying, I'm above the battleground. I'm above the battleground. And I said, great. And then he said, but I, I really, I, I have this huge fear. And he went on with it. And I, I kind of said, well, that's a split desire. You want to be above the battleground, but you have all these fears. I said, they, they don't live in the same arena. You still cannot access God in the vertical in this present moment and now doing that. You can say that. That's book study. Yeah, I'm above the battleground. Boy, I hate this world. It's, it's going to keep you completely crazy until you have your feelings. Okay, now back to the show. Um, okay, so have your feelings. Yep. Okay, that last diagram, I'm just going to, just for the hell of it, talk just a moment. But I think I've already spoken about this and we're running out of time. <laughs> we're running out of time. <laughs> anyway, this, if you notice on this one, all those past lot, thoughts, once you get to the belief and truly clear, correct your mind, then you go back into the present moment with God it clears that channel up. And once that channel is cleared, stuff starts coming through. That's all I can say. And it's guidance. And it's, it's beautiful guidance. I mean, it's like, do this, go here, see this. It'll guide you to wherever you need. And sometimes you get lessons in that guidance. You go someplace and there's a lesson for you. It's like, don't run away from it. Just be with the lesson. And that's what happened to me that ended me up <laughs> throwing up. It's like I was guided to go somewhere and it was something happened. And then I came home and sat with Suzanne and cleared, threw up, had a lot of tears and got to the core of it, which was for me at the, this week was uh, fear of not belonging, fear of loss, you know. And, you know, once I saw it, it was like, well, that, that's ridiculous. Just like seeing someone coming in and saying the world is flat. It's like, well, that's ridiculous. And that's usually, once you get to the belief, that's the way it feels. It's like, well, why would I believe that? And now it's clear. So you get this clear channel back to God. And once you have this clear channel back to God, I, I tell you, guidance is just waiting for you waiting for you. And I'm not saying this is the easiest process on the planet, because it's not. Because when you go through these feelings, it's the last thing you want to do. It's like, oh, no. You know, I love Francis Hsu. 
this is messed up. That's a quote from Francis Hsu. This is messed up. You know, I would lay the four letter words down. You know, this is screwed big. But it's like, allow them. That's, that's the access. So, and then we can finish this up real quickly here. program. Okay. I just want to, this is, I'm going to end with this quote. The miracle minimizes the need for time. In the longitudinal or horizontal plane, the recognition of the equality of the members of the sonship appears to evolve, involve almost endless time. This is everybody and everything we're making wrong. It feels daunting because, I don't know, maybe it's just my mind. I made everything and everybody wrong. For something. I mean, I had a lot of projections going on, but I'm guaranteed there's a speed up happening. And if you have a little willingness to come into the present moment, you can see everybody is absolutely playing their part perfectly, perfectly. And I just need to express the feelings as they come up. And then, however, the miracle entails a sudden shift from horizontal to vertical perception. And this is the horizontal ver versus vertical. If you're trapped in the horizontal timeline, um, you have no access to the vertical. And I think I've got one minute and 45 seconds. I just need to say, on this little video, and it's somewhere on Facebook, um, <clears throat> I, a friend of mine and I, when you're going vertical, you know the faces, and I'm, I'm going to get a hair dryer sometime and do that, you know, so the lips are kind of flapping and the, you know, the jowls are f flying high. It's like, that's what it feels like to go vertical. It's not easy. It's like, this goes against everything I thought I believed. And it's like, and, and you do this every time you, you know, are faced with a belief, with negative thoughts. You have to go through this and come back to vertical, and then you have to go through this and come back to vertical. And it's just, it's a, it's a skill. We're learning a skill. And it takes practice. And it's one thought at a time. One thought at a time. And it's totally doable. And that's what I love about David. David has done this one thought at a time. He, and he's just showing us how to do this ourselves. And this is self-study. This is a book on self-study. I don't care what any book study or tells you. This is a book on self-study. And if I'm fearing something, I'm fearing something. And just reading the book and a line out of the book to make it better is not going to be helpful. So with that being said, I love you all. And I just hope you all have the most wonderful of moments listening to God. Because I know it's some of my most delightful times. Yeah. So for today, folks. Mwah! <laughs> I love you. I love all of you. <laughs>